Good morning. Today we are going to make pretzels here at the tavern. And what I'm doing right now is I'm just getting my ingredients together, which is going to be about two and a quarter cups of water. Half cup of brown sugar, packed tightly, which I already got ready in advance, and a tablespoon of salt, also got ready in advance. Now, once I get that mixed, it's going to be about a tablespoon of yeast as well. Just eyeball it. As dissolved, we're going to end up adding four or five cups of flour to get a nice, thick, a nice moderately stiff dough. And usually, it takes about four or five cups to do that. I usually, start on the lesser side, maybe about three cups. And then we'll mix with a spoon until it gets thick, and then I'll go back and mix with my hand. Because the only way to really tell the dough is thick enough is to really get your hands into it and mix it. This way I can also make sure my yeast and everything is mixed in nicely before I go ahead and start adding the rest of the flour to it. Good morning folks, we're just making pretzels today. Assuming I didn't over measure my water, number five should be all I need to get this going. In fact, it's about where right I'm at. Let's just start getting my hands into it to feel it the rest of the way. I'm not going to add the whole fifth cup yet. That didn't work very well, did it? I think I overestimate my water, so I'm going to add that fifth, that fifth cup of flour, and I'm probably going to need more because this is still really thin um, dough. So it's thick enough to move in my hand, but not enough to really consider it a moderately stiff dough yet. It's now five and a half cups. And you want to try to clear off the sides, so you want to run your hands on the edge of the bowl back and forth, and it will help rub off any additional dough that's stuck to the side and flour. That way, you can take the most of all your ingredients and don't have so much waste at the end. Make sure you do the same thing to the bottom of the bowl as you're mixing it to try and get all of the ingredients mixed in properly. In fact, I actually find it's easier to knead when you're using both hands. However, then you end up with one hand that's a mess and it's hard to get back into the flour without getting stuff on the rest of the flour. And another half cup on top. 
overestimate my water a little bit, but I think we'll be okay. Incidentally, if you have rings on your hands out, I usually suggest taking the rings off. Just Otherwise, you have to get a ring off and don't have to cover the hand and clean it out. Especially if you have any jewels and diamonds on your rings, it's probably better than taking them off. Just don't forget where you put it down. You know, as I'm not even measuring this flower anymore, I'm just kind of putting a little bit in there at a time just until I get to the fuel I want. And of course, now I now have committed myself with both hands into the dough. And I think I'm getting pretty close to where I want this to dough to be at. Now, once this is formed into the dough, we're going to let this sit aside for about an hour or so. If if in doubt when you're making some of these and it doesn't lie and you don't know if you need to give it the, a little bit more time or not, as it's rising, stick your finger into it and poke it. If the dimple stays, that means it's risen enough that you can punch down and start moving on to the next stage. If it doesn't stay, then you need to give it some more time. If you give it extra time, even after the dimple stays, Nothing wrong with it, it's just going to mean that you have to make, just ensure you punch it down and work it so you curl down some of those extra large air balls. Um, our bread dough has risen, it's been at least an hour, actually I've had mine go a little longer than that, so I mentioned before it's not an issue. Uh, and you know it's ready, once I put my finger in it, see that dimple there stayed. So you see the dimple staying a little bit. That's still... Okay, punch. Let's see, just punch it down a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull it out of here, out of the bowl. And I'm going to move the bowls out of my way so I don't break them. Now this is this is actually a double batch, so this should make twice what we have already over on the table. But what I'm going to do um, should give us about 36 pretzels from this. So I'm actually going to make this a little easier for myself to work. I'm going to cut it approximately in half. And from that half, when I cut that in half again, that should give me approximately 9 to 10 pretzels out of this small bunch. So by dividing up, it cuts the work down. It's not quite as overwhelming. You get a little bit better on your measuring. And if they're not perfectly even, no big deal. Um, what you're trying to do is just trying not to, you're trying to get them close, but you don't have to be perfect. And so that should be 9 to 10. I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. About 10 on 24 inches. Okay, that's the length of the now the trick is to give it a spin. The trick is to give it a spin and lay it back down. But you have to give it. So if you do this a lot, this should actually work nicely. I actually have a little bit too much dough, flour on here, so this isn't sticking. So. A little bit of water, we'll get that to stick nicely. Go ahead and give it a 
minute in the soda bath. And when you first put them in, they'll sink. Don't worry about it. They will come back up. And if you don't do this step, your pretzels are not going to get that, that nice brown crust that we're used to. Carefully, you want to give enough room for these to rise, um, to cook in the oven. So, mine are going to get a little bit, probably about six to the sheet right now. It's going to take a few trips getting them out of here, and I'll put them all in the oven at one time. five trays in that bake oven. Now in your oven at home these pretzels should take between 10 to 12 minutes at 400 degrees. However because our bake oven is a bake oven with the and just the characteristics of a bake oven the temperatures can vary so we really need to just watch on it and just keep an eye on it and make sure it's not going to burn. Nothing on the smell, you smell coming out here. And these are the unsalted ones. These, will just, these ones will get a salt, uh, um, a butter bath, um, brushed butter on them, and then we'll put some sugar on those. Two pretzels. 